Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be navigating Blackboard. And Blackboard is a, uh, a platform, an online platform that we are, uh, that we commonly use when we hold online classes, but as well as face to face classes. So the instruction that I provide you today on how to navigate, access Blackboard will be useful for this coming semester and for semesters um, going forward. Um, to access Blackboard, there's a few ways of doing it. The, most, the easiest way um, to find Blackboard is to just go to the utoledo.edu website. And when you get there, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And in the top, you're going to see a place where it says Menu. And if you click on Menu, you're going to see in this list of options here, all the way at the bottom is a My UT. And this is going to take you to the My UT portal. And once you're here, you're going to go into Login, which is in the top right hand corner. So you should see Login up here. When you log in, you're going to put in your username and your password. That will then give you access to the My UT portal. And um, you can find a lot of information here. And one of the things that we're going to be discussing today, right, is Blackboard. And you can find Blackboard if you just scroll down. So I'm on this main page here, and you just scroll down to about the middle, and you're going to find Blackboard. You click on that, it's then going to take you to the Blackboard page. Now, I do want to let you know here at this, at this moment that your Blackboard page will look a little bit different than mine does. Um, so just notice, just note that yours may appear a little bit different here in the middle because your courses will look differently than the courses that I have here. But nevertheless, the layout will be very similar. So when you come to this page, there's a few different things I'm going to show you um, throughout this session here. But the first thing that I want to do is show you how to access a course and how to navigate around the different options um, in the course to find out your assignments, to find out uh, when things are due, to look at your grade, etc. So you're going to notice here that um, in this course list is going to be different semesters. These semesters are going, going to correspond to courses that you are enrolled in for each of those semesters. OK, so it's opening up. You can see when I first opened up the, the page, it showed me the courses for summer 2020 because that is the current semester we're in. Um, but in the fall, it will automatically show you the courses in the fall. But just know <coughs> that you can go um, and look at your courses uh, in previous semesters as well. OK, if those courses are still open. So I'm just going to choose a course here to start navigating. So you select on whichever course you want to access. And when you get to this screen, this is going to be like the home page of the course. And again, this will be a little bit different depending on how your instructor has set up the course. Um, but the layout will be very similar, if not identical. Okay. The first thing you're going to see on this page here is course news. And course news is really, really helpful um, because what it tells you is it will give you the announcements. So a lot of instructors use announcements to post homework. They use announcements to remind you of due dates, um, upcoming exams, maybe a change in um, due dates, whatever. An instructor can use announcements for many purposes. But what's really nice is that you see those right here on the main screen. And you could always go look at um, past announcements by clicking on more announcements here, okay? In addition, to the right of that, you're gonna see to do, to do. And this again is really nice because what it's gonna show you is assignments that are due, okay? So it's gonna show you what's past due and then also what's coming up. So what's due today, what's due tomorrow, this week, and including in the future. This is nice because a lot of instructors will post due dates uh, for assignments uh, in Blackboard where you have to submit the assignment in Blackboard. So this kind of provides a little check to make sure that you know what assignments are due and to make sure that you have completed the assignments on time. 
And you can always use the calendar function here. So if you want to see what is due next Monday, you could just click the next, you know, the date and it will show you uh, what is due for that day. You just press go. Below this is what's new. And this could be whatever has happened new uh, within the course. You can find those here, and those are broken up with announce, broken up by announcements, assessments, assignments, um, et cetera. And you could just click on those, and again, you can find what has recently happened in the course. Okay, so you can see assessments here. Recently, we had a weekly quiz one, weekly quiz two. Okay, and you can access those assignments that way. Now, if you go back up to the top of the screen. Again, I just want to remind you that this may look a little bit different because instructors do have the ability to design their Blackboard uh, courses and pages in the way that they prefer. But I'm going to show you some very common features um, that, our that our instructors use and that, inst that students um, obviously use uh, because the instructor has set up the course that way. First is course news. Okay, so that's very similar. Whenever you want to navigate back to this main screen, you're just going to click course news. So for example, and I'll show you here in a minute, if I want to go to announcements down here. Let's say I'm looking at this, but I want to go back to that main screen. I just click course news. Okay, and it's going to take me right back to that main screen. Next is daily class meeting. Daily class meeting, if you click on this, that will take you to access, that will take you to the, um, to the course, into the online course, excuse me, to the online course. So if your class is meeting in real time, so it is synchronous, that means that if you have a class from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Um, and you need to actually access that course, at that time and your instructor will be holding course at that time then they usually will set up a link called daily class meeting and so it's really easy all you would do is click on this link here and it would take you then to this link and you would be able to access the course okay and that will take you right into the online class all right again i'm going to go back to course news go back to the main screen Class materials is the third option here. Class materials is very useful because this is probably where you're going to find everything that you need um, for to, to help you complete the course. This is usually in class materials where instructors put their syllabus, they put um, class recordings, um, any assignments here, quizzes and exams, any kind of writing resources, um, this is where they access assignments, et cetera. And I'll kind of go through these and show you really quickly. They often will create different folders for different um, materials for the class. So one of the features that instructors have the ability to do is they can record their classes. Again, um, this your instructor may choose to record lectures um, or anything. You may have to record uh, yourself giving a presentation. Nevertheless, that you could find it perhaps in a folder like this. And um, you could then just access. So you see that this instructor here has organized their class lectures based on the date. So if you want to go back and look at Thursday, July 9th, that lecture or what happened in that class, we could look at that. Okay. Again, going back to class materials. Now, again, I just want to emphasize instructors will design their courses differently. OK, so class materials could look differently than what is here. Um, but this is just one example. So this instructor has writing resources here. And in writing resources, they have a lot of different handouts or uh, links to different uh, resources that they are using in this course, okay? And so you could find the material there. Um, 
if you have writing assignments, for example, you're going to be able to see that they will often, if you want to submit a writing assignment, right, let's say we want to submit the first draft, we're going to go here, and that's what this screen will look like here, okay? So if you have to submit a writing assignment or submit any kind of assignment, um, and they want, the instructor wants you to upload it to Blackboard, right, submit it on Blackboard. This is what this is going to look like. So if you're creating a document on your computer, you would just go to browse my computer and you would find the link, just like in an email when you're attaching, when you're um, attaching a, a document to an email, it's the same kind of feature here, okay? So you would just browse my computer, find the document you want and attach it, okay? If you are asked to write a submission, so let's say you're not attaching a document, but you are instead um, the instructor asks you to type in Blackboard and submit it, then you're going to choose this function called Write Submission. And when we click that, it's going to give you a screen that kind of looks like Microsoft Word or any kind of um, Word document, you know, it gives you the same features here, okay? And so this is where you would type in your response or whatever kind of assignment you need to do. and and then you would just hit submit down here. I should also say when you upload a document, okay, to this, um, you would also need to hit submit. Don't forget to hit submit to ensure that you have uploaded something, okay? Lastly, if you wanna give any comments to your instructor, okay, maybe, um, maybe you need to make a comment about something, you know, you upload it and, um, you know, you, you need to provide some kind of comment to your instructor, you can type that here, okay? And again, hit submit. When you hit submit, you will see, the screen will give you up here in the top that you have successfully submitted an assignment. So make sure you look for that, okay? It's going to be like a pink color and it will notify you that you have successfully submitted an assignment, all right? The last thing I want to show you on this screen that is also really helpful is save draft. So you're going to see that option down here in the bottom right hand corner. It is to the left of submit. All right, is save draft. This is really helpful because if you are, if the instructor wants you to type something in this box um, and you're not done, let's say you've started on this assignment ahead of time and you want to continue working on it before the due date, but you want to leave it and you want to come back to it later. Well, all you have to do is just click Save Draft, and that will that will save it for you, and then you can access it later before you submit it, okay? And also, there's the feature, the far left option is to cancel. So if you just decide you don't, you made a mistake or something, you just hit cancel, and you can start over. Okay. This will tell you at the top of this, if you have to complete an assignment, it will tell you the due date. So you should see here the due date, right? It's due Monday, July 13th. It'll give you the time, 7 a.m. And it will give you the points possible. So how many points it is worth in case you forget that information. Okay. So that's class materials. And again, just wanna emphasize that instructors will design this and use this for different purposes, okay? So, um, and instructors will definitely go over this information with you on the first day of class and always will be help, helpful if you uh, forget how to navigate the course. So just be sure to ask them if you're struggling to find something that you're looking for, but um, class materials is always a good place to go because it houses um, about all the content material you will need for the course, okay? The last option here that I want to show you is My Grades. And if you click on My Grades, then you probably can guess it's going to show you the grades uh, for each assignment that has been graded or that you've completed throughout the term, okay? And so you can see your individual grades on each assignment, and you can also see your your cumulative grade, your overall grade, okay, when you do that. Okay. The next thing I wanna show you is down here in course tools. Course tools, if you go to course tools, 
So you're going to see there's a lot of options here. And again, it will depend on what your instructor is using. But one of the some of the features that um, I'm going to show you today is, for example, announcements. And announcements, as I previously stated, um, you know, you can see this instructor uses it to post homework uh, assignments, to remind students of due dates, etc. So, announcements is something that is very commonly used by instructors. And just to remind you, I'm going to click up here and show you that announcements are also the same. It, 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 it mirrors what is here, okay, in my announcement. So you can find your announcements in a couple of different places for each course. Attendance, if you click on attendance, you can then see um, what your attendance rate um, is for the term, okay? Uh, a lot of instructors keep attendance in Blackboard because it's very convenient. You can always see your attendance. Um, it allows instructors to mark when you are absent, when you are late, and when you are present. So you can always keep track of um, your attendance that way. Blogs is a feature that some instructors use and you may use as well. Um, it is a feature that allows for open communication tools for students to share their thoughts with instructors or with each other. Um, so if you need to create a blog, Blackboard is really easy to navigate. So it just says create blog and you just start, okay? And you would name the blog, you would give it a title, all right? Whichever title you think is appropriate. It does need a name though. So just keep in mind, that's why there's a little red star here. Anytime you see a little red star next to something in Blackboard, it means that it is required, okay? So you cannot submit something without filling this in. So you have to, you have to give it a name, a title. And then this is where you would type your blog right okay and then you would submit contacts is a interesting feature that blackboard has um, and that may be very useful for you and some of your classes you you will be required to complete group work um, or maybe even work with it with another classmate and, um, or in some cases, instructors will assign you to a team of students or to one other student in you two or you three, four, five of you, et cetera, your group will work together for the entire semester. What contacts allows you to do is to create, um, infor it allows you to put information about, for example, your group members. So, um, if you want, let's say I am going to work with Ryan Bright. I would put in his first name and his last name. And maybe, of course, I want to know his email, right? Because um, I would want to contact him throughout the term, right? And also, if you're sharing your phone numbers, you could also put in your phone number here. Um, and this is just some additional information. But what is really nice is that this feature allows you to then, if you save this information, once you have all the information in here that you would like, you can click submit, okay? And then when you go back into contacts, what you're gonna find is a list of those contacts you have made. So this is really, really useful. Um, you know, if you're working on a group project and you need to reach one of your group members, and you forget their email, if you create a contact for that person, then you can just go back here and look at that information. Or if you need to give them a call or send them a text message, you will have the information here. It's also helpful because, you know, you'll be taking multiple classes. And so if you forget you're working in groups for different classes and you forget which members you're working or which um, people you're working with for each class, then Blackboard allows you to just you know, organize that. So all of the contacts in this course 
would be for the group that you're working on in that course. And then, you know, for each course, you can create different contact lists. So that's really useful. Also notice that there's a feature called create folder. So let's say for week one, you're working with this group and for week two, you're working with another group. Well, you need to collect information on your group members, their email, their cell phone numbers, et cetera. Um, you can create folders, so you could title it week one. So I could just do that here. week one, right? And then you could put all of your contacts into week one, for example. Okay. So that's a really nice feature that's offered in Blackboard. Another feature that I want to show you is Course Calendar. Course Calendar will allow you to see um, everything that is coming up that is due. So you will see this instructor has put different due dates for various assignments um, and the dates. And that's what you're seeing here in green. What's really nice if is if you look down here in the left hand side, it gives you a calendar. So if I want to see what to do. Um, let's do like a previous month. Let's go to previous month here. Then you can see what was due in June, right? So you can navigate it that way. You can also look at the calendar by week instead of month. Okay. And also down here, what is really nice is you'll see these different colors. And these different colors are going to correspond to different courses that you are in. And there's also a personal. So you can also keep it track of your personal schedule in Blackboard. Um, and then each of your courses will have a different set or different color, excuse me. So for any of your Blackboard courses that you access, if you go to course calendar, you can see all of the assignments that are due um, for all of your courses throughout the term, or in this case, throughout the month of July, right? You see that here. And you can access the months by just clicking on the right or the left button. If you go to today, then it will just show you what's due today. But here you can just navigate by clicking on the different ones. Discussion board is very commonly used as well. It is similar to um, blogs. Um, blogs is more authored. Discussion board is more facilitated by the instructor. So um, your instructor may give you a, a question to respond to, and he or she may want you to respond to a particular question. He may want he or she may want everyone in the class to respond to that question. Um, and so what the instructor would do, is create that question and then you would go in and you could respond to it. So you would just access, you would see a list of discussion boards here and you would just click on the one that you wanna to respond to. And again, it's gonna give you a place to type that response and you just hit submit. Discussion board is widely used for courses that meet in real time and for those that are asynchronous or don't um, necessarily meet on a specific day and time. Um, so very likely your instructors will be using discussion board uh, throughout the term. Journals, again, is another writing tool that some instructors use, particularly in those courses uh, related to like that are very writing heavy or courses in English like composition courses. Um, and again, this gives you a place to reflect um, depending on how the instructor sets up the journal. It could be private between you and the you and the instructor alone, or it could be something that is shared with the class. It just depends on how the instructor um, 
how the instructor uses journals in their class. Um, but your, your instructor will definitely go over all of those details about its visibility to either just the instructor or to uh, the other classmates. But journals is sometimes used again, but it's going to be more likely used in English courses, composition courses. Send email is another function. And in send email, this is also a really nice feature. Yours will, your screen probably will look a little bit different, but if you want to send an email, um, you can go back here for just a minute. So if you want to send an email in this course, what is really nice is if your instructor makes this available to students, you will be able to see all of the students in the course. So if I want to send an email to Ryan Wright, I would just click on Ryan Wright's name, okay? And I would click this arrow button to the right. That would be who the email is going to go to, okay? And you will see Ryan Wright's information shows up here with, the, uh, with his email address. And just like in a normal email, I would give it a subject, write a title for um, that email. And then you would write the email just like normal, okay? You can also attach files to that email. And then down always in the bottom right-hand corner, it's going to be submit. Anytime you wanna submit something, you always can find it in the bottom right-hand corner. In addition, if you wanna cancel it, and you want to start over, you can also find that in the bottom right hand corner. So, uh, and this is set up just like a normal email. Uh, all the functions are there for you. Um, and you can send that email. Let's say you accidentally click on another name, right? Ting Lee. But I don't want Ting Lee to be in that email anymore. I only want Ryan Wright. Then I just click on Ting Lee's name and you can click on the left button here and that will put her name back into the options, essentially. So just look at selected. Selected, wh whose ever name appears here is going to be who receives the email, okay? And this includes, uh, the names mentioned here will be um, the student names as well as the instructor uh, instructor's name. So if you need to email the instructor, you could do it this way. This is sometimes helpful because when you send an email through um, the normal my UT email, sometimes it you know people have the same name, and so you can mistake um, your professor for someone else or another student who has the same name as another student, and you know it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so this is an easy way. If you know Ryan Wright, you don't have to you don't have to worry about finding the right the right Ryan Wright. Um, you could just uh, look in your course here, you know he's in your course, so it must be that's the correct Ryan Wright, and, and so it's uh, you don't have to worry about sending it to the wrong person. Okay. So, and the last feature I want to show you um, on this left hand column here in course management is Grade Center, and Grade Center again is a place that you can find your grade. Okay, you can access and look at your grades. A couple of features up here at the top that I think are also very useful uh, for you to know about is if I am, let's just say, for example, I am in announcements. Um, but I want to go back to the main screen and I want to get out of this course and I want to go look at another course. Then I just can click on this in the top left hand corner, you're going to see this UT Shield. Okay, that's the symbol, the logo for UT. And if you click on that, it's going to take you back to this main Blackboard page and where you can select a different course. Okay, you can select a different course if you would want to do that. All right. In addition, here in this um, this area here, you're going to see student support. If you click on student support, 
you can, this is very user friendly and very helpful. Let's say you have a question, something is not working with your Blackboard account, you're not able to find something, you're not able to access, access something, you're gonna see that there's somebody from the UT Online Help Desk. These are people who can help you figure out your, your problem or issue that you're having uh, related to Blackboard. And if it says available, then somebody is ready to respond to you and to help you. Um, and so you can just click on your question here you can also do some other functions like sending an email or uploading a file if they need to see the file. You can do that. Um, so that's all there for you, okay? Um, and and they are they are very responsive. So if ever you're having trouble, just remember go to student support. Okay, student support up here in the top right hand corner. Student support. In addition, there's a toll-free number. So if you, um, if they are, if the live chat is not available, okay, um, then you can try the toll-free number, which you can also access. Um, and also, there's a local number. So if you are still in the United States, then you could um, you could access um, the the UT help desk by calling. Okay. And there's as well a email, an email address to contact them. Okay. This also will give you some more information about Blackboard and different resources here on the right hand side. So you see there's resources for current students. And this contains a lot of different links that you can go to um, for different issues that you may need help with. Again, that information here at the top or at the top of this page is right here about how to um, contact them. It tells you what they can help you with and just different services that they offer. Okay, so um, do know that we have an e-library service. So if you need to access the library, you can do that online. If you need tutoring services, you need extra help, you can do that online, okay? Um, if you need to take a test and that um, someone needs to t needs to oversee you taking it, you can access that here. Student different student services are here, um, and these are just some additional um, resources for you. So there's a lot of information in this uh, student support tab that you can find. Also, in addition, there's Blackboard produced videos. So these videos also can be helpful in explaining how to navigate through Blackboard if, or if you forget how to submit something, whatever. Hopefully this video that I'm leading you through will be, will be able to answer all your questions. But in case not, there are some additional videos here from Blackboard. And again, if you're here and you wanna go back to that main page, I just click in the top left hand corner that logo and it will take you back to this page. When you're done with Blackboard, in the top right hand corner, you're going to see kind of this little circle with a line through it. You're just going to click log out. Okay. And it will take you back to the MyUT uh, portal. And when you're done, you can just log out of here as well. And this will take you back to the home page of the My UT portal. So I hope this video was very helpful for you and, and you hopefully you learned some things about how to navigate and access Blackboard. Um, and if you have any questions, then just please let us know. We're always here as a resource and always happy to help you. Um, and we want to see you be successful. So please always contact us if you have any questions. And good luck, and I wish you a wonderful semester.